Hello guys, in this video I'm going to review a request that I received um, with this uh, object. I have over here this object that has uh, just four holes. It's just a test object, I guess, which has a plate with some holes. The question is how you can change the size of these holes and how you can actually make this with precision. Um, I'm going to tackle first in this video just how to change the size and discuss on this how to modify the imported object because I have a lot to say and I don't want to make the video too long. Um, in the next video I'm going to discuss how actually to per, uh, pos, um, position them and uh, you know make it from scratch. For now what I want to say with this imported object some something interesting um, that you can see over here that everything is triangles. You know in uh, CAD software you can have quads or triangles, SelfCAD supports both. Um, I don't know which software exactly this was created and if it was originally created as triangles or not. I just want to say one thing that um, mesh-based uh, uh, file types do not uh, generally support triangles. I mean, they, they may support in somewhat, but not in a standardized format. So this was sent to me in an SDL. Um, if you would, for example, create an object with quads in SelfCAD and then you export them to STL, we will convert them first to triangles so they will be compatible with other software. If you would import it back, you'll see triangles. Uh, if you would use the self-cut file format, they will stay as um, quads basically. So I don't know if this was originally created as quads and as a consequence of exporting to SDL, this is why it was created, converted to triangles or it was originally created triangles. Nevertheless, you can simplify them. And the other thing that I see over here, this is a very dense mesh it has 14,000 uh, faces. And the 14,000 faces may be related to the way uh, it was created then, so the circular cut um, basically cuts only here. I'll come back to this later, the idea, like how you can control where the cuts is, is being created. So first let me show you how you can clean this up. I'll go to resolution uh, and set the number of zero, and then it will basically simplify. You see we got it down to just 518 faces from over 14,000. And now we actually have quads over here as well. This converts it to quads. Now, why would you care about quads? Um, one main reason actually here is loop selection. So if I would go now to face selection and I'll choose the option. I want to select changing the size of this. So I need to select them basically. I'll go loop selection. This allows me to create, let's say, select just a region. Or if I want to select an entire thing, I could just click here and the neighbor and it selects the entire circle. And now what I can do is I can go to scale and I see the size of this is 10 by 10 and the depth is 15. So I'm just gonna change the size, let's say to 15. So we have the size of this is 15, okay? Now, if you would wanna do the same thing with uh, triangles, let's undo this, uh, bring it back to the original mesh before we simplified it. And, okay, so you see over here, if I would try now to loop select, this will give me an error saying is that a message that only quads, okay, because you cannot do quads. Now you can switch to polygon selection. This will help a little bit. Let me just turn it off. The way you would see normal polygon selection without going to advanced settings, it will behave like this. So because each of these are basically a polygon, they're flat, there are many faces, they are polygon, but you have to manually select all of them, which is really tedious and almost impossible. Um, so what you can do over here, there's actually two options. Uh, one option is to simply use the tolerance, and if it increases by, let's say, two, it will select a little bit. If it increases to the max, it will select kind of like a half a circle. And then I can go in to select, let's say, this half, and then click over here to select the other half. And I've selected, basically, it's hard to see, it's a small object here, but, um, yeah, two or three clicks, if you manage to see it, you can basically, you see over here, if I turn on this mode, you can see I've selected the entire circle, and now I can go scale that without a problem. Um, in some cases this will work, but let me show you what will happen with the deep selection. So if I go to deep selection, uh, I can actually bring it down, let's say, if I do deep selection without changing any tolerance, it will be the same as a single polygon, just selecting a single polygon. If I turn on the tolerance even just one, I can select the entire circle at once. So you can see it go over here, let's say this circle, and just selecting all of these circles quite easily and then size them. So how is this working? Um, basically what's happening here is that a polygon is something that is completely flat. And in this case, this is completely flat, just one side. If we increase the tolerance, it tells the computer basically that 
you allow a certain deviation, a certain angle offset from the click. And this is where deep selection makes a big difference. Without deep selection, it says, okay, so I agree to, let's say, 1 equals to, let's say, 45 degree angle. This, this goes between 1 and 10. It's not exact angle defined. But let's say this is for, it equals to 45 degree angle. That means from the point where I click, it can go up to 45 degree angle in both directions. So in that case, I can just go around and select. And if you increase it to 10, the max, it will allow you to select a lot more, which is almost like a half a circle. Um, and if you do uh, deselect all, if you do deep selection, this is the same concept that allows deeper, but instead of looking at from where I click until I reach 45 degree angle, it will say select everything until, until um, you have a single face that is a, uh, that has a 45 degree angle from the previous one, a single polygon rather, that is offset from the other one for degree angle. So in this case, because they are a very smooth transition, none of them are um, a big angle from the other faces, then even it's a number one will allow me to select the entire thing at once. So both of them have different use cases where they're helpful. Um, but yeah, so this is basically what it is. Uh, the part selection is, is really, really helpful. I'll show that when we discuss about how to create them from scratch. And this is where we're gonna show how to use the part selection. Um, so that's it basically for now. As far as uh, the face structure is, you can see that this is basically created something like this. Um, if I clean them up, I've shown before, let me just touch on this quickly. So if I clean this up and I do something like this, um, all of these tiny faces extend till here, which may create an issue if you want to bevel these faces using chamfer or fillet options. So a simple option here could be if I can just select for example these faces and i inset them and you have to oh well, look how how much you inset them by 50 this is just destroying the mesh i can inset them until they start self-intersecting so if i do something like this we can see all faces are still intact without breaking anything and now i give enough space here to work with and you can continue increasing until you see they start breaking now you see seven in this case is already starting to break or maybe just yet eight is definitely breaking already, overlapping other pieces and so on. So I would say like a safe side to something like six. And now you have this structure over here. Um, but when you create from scratch, you have a lot more control of how you want to create it. And it's not just creating from scratch. It's the same when you do Boolean operations or any other cu cutting. It always takes into consideration the general geometry. So if you would, for example, have something that's completely flat and just add a box around the circles and then use the circular cut, uh, the cylinder to cut or something like that, um, it will basically triangulate that around the box and, and will get you control. But there's no need to uh, increase the resolution of the entire object. You can just make customized cuts and I'll show that in the next video how to get uh, more control of this. Um, so yeah, so this was basically how to clean up and change sizes and look for the next video for how to create them, position them with precision. I hope this was helpful and uh, let me know in the comments if you need me to show anything else. Thank you.